matter you have, any position you occupy that seems pleasant and honorable is a privilege. Elijah said to the Lord, he said, I'm the only prophet of God that is left. And God said, I'm sorry. I have 7,000 that has not bowed their knees to bow. In fact, that statement from Elijah. Now look what Elijah said. He was afraid of Jezebel, but that didn't bother God. As soon as he said, I am the only one left, God said, no, 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 no. No one is indisposable. He said, I'm going to kick you out. God never gave me a response. God never even gave him comfort. I expected the Lord to say, oh my son, don't you worry. Be of good cheer. God said, okay. Since you want to retire, I'll retire you premature. And that's why like I was teaching you that John had to come again. Because the assignment of Elijah was not complete. And John was killed. And Elijah's spirit is going to come back upon us at intercession before the rapture. Alright, so... Seeing life as a privilege. Life is not a problem to be solved. Life is a gift to be enjoyed. Life is not a problem to be solved. Life is a gift to be enjoyed. You see, see life as a privilege. See what, wherever you are, whatever you occupy today as a privilege. When you see it as a privilege, your position, that privileged position, will not consume or swallow you up. He said, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Take me as thy servant. Life is a privilege, not a right. Life is a privilege. You know, you know, you know how people express privilege, you see. When people place demands, they see life as a right. When people place demands, Give me, my father, give me the portion that falleth to me. You see, he saw life as a right. The other I came, he said, make me. He saw life as a privilege. Those who see life as a right like to be given. But those who see life as a privilege like to be made. Make me. Make me. We see three things there. Three expression of privilege. Number one, humility. He demeaned himself. He demeaned himself. Humility. Humility. The Bible says in First Peter chapter five, verse five. First Peter five five. He says, God resisted the proud. He gives grace to the humble. So if you are a proud man, your number one enemy is God, not Satan. God resists the pride. He gives grace. James chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 6, He gives grace to the humble. Proverbs 15, 33. The Bible says, Before honor is humility. Before honor is humility. In Philippians 2, if you read verse 8, He said, He humbled Himself unto death, even death on the cross. Humility. When you see life from the lens of humility, then you are seeing life as a privilege. You are humble. You are humble. You are humble. So, it's very important that we begin to imbibe that character. The prodigal son sat back and thought about life and he saw it as a privilege. The second proof or second um, sign of privilege is seeing, is agreeing rather that you are wrong. You must agree you are wrong. You see, when people say they are wrong or people agree they are wrong, you know because the apology comes without explanation. If the prodigal son had said, my father, I'm sorry, but, but I want to say something. How come all I went through, you didn't look for me? It's okay, it's okay, it's fine. But I'm sorry. Whenever people come to apologize and they give excuses or explanation, they are not truly really sorry. When people apologize and give a clause, well, well, I, I, I'm sorry. But the truth is, no, that's not apology. An apology is total. It's void of a clause. 
He said, I am wrong. I am sorry. Admit that you are wrong. Admit you can be wrong. Admit there are people in marriages who are never wrong. Okay? Your husband talks to you, you are never wrong. You are always looking for how to tell him his fault. Your wife talks to you, everything she says, don't tell me, I know what I'm doing. I, many times my wife talks to me and tells me this aspect, this aspect, that's okay, I'm listening. Okay, this aspect, okay, this aspect, okay, fine, I'm going to make amends. It doesn't take anything from you. The same thing I talk to her. This, this, okay, I'm going to make amends. It doesn't take anything from couples. It doesn't take anything from friends, from colleagues in the office. You can be wrong. The only thing that cannot be corrected is a dictionary. You are not a dictionary. You can be corrected. We go to the dictionary to get to no, look for definitions. You are not a dictionary. You can be corrected. You can be wrong. Admit you are wrong. Uh, no, there are so many people who are very defensive. They are very defensive. Before you say something to them, they pick a fault. Either they tell you your tone is wrong. Say, oh, oh, okay, why are you shouting now? Why are you shouting? Could you just talk to me in a low tone? The problem is not the tone. Admit you are wrong. Okay? So, you must understand that you can be wrong. I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Sometimes, that tells us that what we do to people, heaven sees it and feels it. I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Sometimes, you offend heaven by the way you treat people. The way he treated his father, he knew heaven felt it. The way you treat your husband, the way you treat your wife, you know heaven is watching. Sometimes I tell people, you can never be successful in life. Godliness. Success with godliness. You can never achieve success with godliness, ministry, business, without having humanity. Humanity in the sense that are some people who want God to use them. But they are naturally bad people. Their heart is bad. They don't care how they treat people. They don't care how people feel. This young man knew I treated my father wrongly. Because what the father gave him was half of his living. In other words, what the father lived on. What he survived on. Cutting half of it is like taking the man's oxygen. So he felt it. He said, that what, I, what, what I did to you, I know heaven felt the pain. Someone that gives you, gives you a platform in life. You don't treat them like that. This man brought into this world, gave you a platform to be his son. And now you are reacting this way. You see, how do you treat people? There are people that want to be successful in business. They carry, all, they carry books. Ten keys to success. It doesn't matter all the books you read with all the keys. If you are naturally a wicked person, those keys will not work for you. Even in ministry. There are people take aside the anointing on them. Naturally, they are compassionate. Check them. They do well in ministry. Take, just take the anointing aside. Naturally, they are good people. They are compassionate people. They feel the pulse of others. But there are some people, the anointing, before, before the anointing comes on them, naturally, they are wicked. You sit in their leadership. It's self-centered. They think about themselves alone. They cage everybody. No freedom. People are suffering, dying under their watch. Because naturally, they are wicked. How you treat people, heaven watches you. How you treat even your security guard, heaven is at work. How you treat the house help. Look at the way Naaman, Naaman's wife treated the house help. The maid in Naaman's house was the person who gave the prescription and recommendation for Elisha, for uh, 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 Naaman to be healed by the prophet Elisha. How do you treat people? He said, I've sinned against heaven. It was a sin against heaven. He said, but before thee. You know what Joseph said to Potiphar, Potiphar's wife? He said, your husband put me in charge. There is nobody in this house greater than your husband. Or greater than me, except your husband. I'm in charge of everybody. And now you offer yourself to me? He said, no, no, no. How will I do this great wickedness and sin against God? It is wickedness to man, but it's sin to God. In other words, I have a humanity. I have a humanity. The things you do, the things you do to people, 
it triggers a response in heaven. Okay. It triggers a response. Don't forget, life is a privilege. Don't be too carried away. Even if you can pay for a car, still pray about it. Even if you can, if you can pay for it, still pray about it. Even if you can pay for a new apartment, still ask the Lord, should I move in there? Because Sodom and Gomorrah looked well watered. It looked well watered. And because Lot walked with the eyes of the flesh, he regretted it. So humanity is important. I've sinned against heaven and before thee. Now look what he said. The third sign and third trigger of privilege is availability, self-availability. Make me one of your hired servants. Whenever you see life as a privilege, you are ready to serve. You are not ready to be served, but you are ready to serve. In church, at home, you are ready to serve. You are ready to serve. Have the heart of a servant. Jesus said, does anyone want to be great? Let him be a servant. Okay, you must be ready to serve. Serve the Lord. Serve your community. Serve your nation. Someone needed Jesus' attention and couldn't get it. And people spoke for him. He said, this man, he loved our nation. How? He has built for us a synagogue. Now, after this lockdown is over, the best you can do is to serve in your local church like never before. Like never before. Serve in your local church like never before. Okay? Like never before. Readiness to serve. Willingness to serve. Availability. That was what Elijah did. Isaiah rather. He said, Lord, here am I. Send me. I'm ready to serve. Are you ready to serve? Are you ready to say to the Lord, I'm available for you to use me. I'm available to be used by you. I'm available to be your vessel. Use me, Lord. I'm available. That's what God wants from you. That's what God wants of you. I have so many other things to talk about, but like I said, we, we don't exceed an hour. And I'm going to just take a few testimonies. And I'll throw, don't forget, tomorrow we are going to be praying scriptures. Each scripture I bring forth, we're going to be having a wonderful warfare time to pray. We're going to take our time to pray the word of God, you know, to pray scriptures into our life. And I'm going to read each scripture, explain them, and then we'll begin to pray. How do you pray scriptures into your life? And it becomes a part of you and begins to produce results. We're going to hear just very few testimonies. And then I'll pray with you and believe God for a miracle for you. Good evening, Papa. I was booked for operation on the 24th March, but was later postponed due to COVID-19 pandemic. I followed your prayer and fasting on Wednesday, and the pain in my lower abdomen, the reason for the operation, disappeared. Thank you, Lord. Praise and thanks to your God. Eunice from Germany. Eunice, the pain is gone. And it will never return. In Jesus' mighty name. You need you are healed. What a God we serve. Good morning, Papa. My last child is four years old. I've been having miscarriage ever since. But when I connected my faith with Papa, I became pregnant again. After one month plus, I stopped having the symptoms. Rather, I was seeing blood. But during the teaching of the Holy Spirit, Papa prayed concerning the fruit of the womb. I connected my faith. I went to the hospital. The doctor said, I am pregnant. The baby is in good condition. I'm here to return the glory to God, Mrs. Julia. You will carry that pregnancy to full term and deliver like the Hebrew women. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Good morning. I'm in Cameroon. I place a picture of my parents. My mom is having difficulty in walking and my dad has diabetes. And now has diabetes and is made is make whole. Uh, I'm sure he's trying to say is made whole. Ari, Diane, Cameroon. Thank you, Father. 
what a God we serve. He's a God of miracles. Good morning, Daddy. I'm evangelist and leader in Kechi Owanebo, a partner as well. Was watching from my bed in my bedroom. I have been having these palpitations for the past.